I have a problem. I can't stop buying ocarinas. And other stuff. I have the cash to burn, I have the desire, and I have the lack of self-control. That describes me about a year ago. In various segments of the Ocarina community, I've seen this certain point of debate or discussion. Do you buy more ocarinas, or do you focus on getting good with the ones you have? Just from a philosophical, anti-consumerist, anti-capitalist mindset, I would definitely have to agree with the, uh, the perspective of get good with the ones you have and don't buy ones you don't need. You only need one solid ocarina to learn the fundamentals of the instrument. Then you might want like a plastic one for travel, and then ocarinas in whichever ranges you end up playing. Like if they're a multi-chamber, or if you want like a bass, or a contrabass, or if you're in a septet, or anything like that. But if you want to cover almost all of your basses, you could really just get a plastic alto C, a triple bass, and maybe one to three other 12 holes in various ranges to cover your basses, and you'll be good in 98% of scenarios, maybe more. <laughs> But that is not to say that you should never buy extra ocarinas or any item that gives you joy. So with that in mind, as someone who believes in not buying what you don't need, but also has a collection of over 40 ocarinas, here is a mental flowchart that I've been using to reduce my unnecessary ocarina purchases and other expensive, somewhat utilitarian items while also still giving myself an out to buy them if I really want or need them. Let's begin. Step one in this flowchart is, can I safely afford to buy this? Consider your bills, your future plans, tuition, whatever. There's a big difference between wanting a $99 ocarina and having $100 in the bank, and uh, having enough money to pay for all your bills, and then enough gravy that can more than afford the ocarina while still being able to afford other fun things in your life. If you can't afford to buy the ocarina without making any major sacrifices, save until you can. There's no rush. But still be cautious even when you have the money to pay for it. Which brings me to step two. What purpose does this ocarina have? Is it a different key or a different range? Like maybe it's your first bass ocarina. Maybe it's your first multi-chamber ocarina. Maybe it's a pendant ocarina. Is it an upgrade to something you already have? Maybe you only have a plastic 12-hole alto C and you want to get a good ceramic alto C. Is it simply just an art piece? You want to have it as a decoration or a point of conversation? Or just something that every time you look at it, you just think, wow, what craftsmanship? Basically, make sure you know why you're buying the ocarina. If it's just an impulse purchase, maybe take a break. Maybe don't get it. Maybe move on to step three. Do I already have something that fulfills this purpose? For example, if you're purchasing another Alto C, how many Alto Cs do you already have? How many good Alto Cs do you already have? Again, if you don't have a good justification for buying the ocarina, Maybe you need to think a little bit more. For example, I have a bunch of really good ceramic 12-hole alto Cs. I have a few really good plastic 12-hole alto Cs. I don't need any more 12-hole alto Cs. The only scenario in which I would get another 12-hole alto C would either be for a review, which is a clear purpose, or as an art piece, unlike any other ocarina I currently have. I have no other reason to get a 12 hole alto C, so outside of those two reasons, I'm not buying any more 12 hole alto Cs because I already have pretty much anything that could cover that particular purpose. And then the next point, if you still really want this ocarina, step four, based on past purchases, how likely am I to rarely or never touch this ocarina a year from now? And it doesn't have to be an ocarina, it could be any major purchase. Consider times you've bought something that you really, really want in the moment, like a new game on Steam, or a new game for your Switch, or a camera lens, or an ocarina, and you get a huge dopamine rush when you get it, it's great, you're so happy, and then you enjoy it for a couple weeks, and then a year later, you just completely forget it. You don't even remember the time you spent using it, and it's just collecting dust somewhere. I've had that with many purchases, including ocarinas, so that's just something that I consider before the final step in my flowchart. Step five. Regardless of steps two through four, do I just 
really want it. Like, is this something that I have been thinking about for days, weeks, and I just can't get it off my mind, and there's an itch that will not be scratched until I buy it? My recommendation is wait a week or a couple weeks. If after a couple weeks, and you can afford the instrument, that's an important note, you can afford the instrument, if you really still want it after thinking about it and waiting on it, just go ahead and get it. If it's not hurting you to get it, if it's not putting you in any dire financial straits, even if it doesn't fulfill a particular purpose, even if you have all the instruments that might fill that exact purpose that you're buying it for, if you really want it and you can afford it, just do it. Like, if you don't have a really strong desire backed by a good reason, it'll probably fade. You probably won't care in like two weeks after your initial rush to buy it. But if you're still thinking about it two weeks later, there probably is a good reason behind your desire, even if it's not a rational one. And just go for it. Go crazy. Buy ocarinas. <laughs> But this framework of step one, can you afford it? Step two, what's the purpose? Step three, do you have something that already fulfills this purpose? Step four, will you forget about it in a year? Step five, do you just really want it? That doesn't just apply to ocarinas. I can apply this to like camera lenses. Um, I bought this lens after going through this exact series of five steps. And I'm really happy with this purchase, even though it was really expensive and I was really sad seeing my Amazon credit card balance. And um, the pictures are really nice though. I'll go to Instagram.com slash Andy Cormier photo and you'll see some great pictures, mostly taken with this lens, the Tamron 17 to 70 millimeter F2.8 for my Sony APS-C A6600 camera. Affiliate link in the description. Please help me pay for this lens. <laughs> Again, you can apply this flowchart to anything beyond ocarinas. I've had periods in my life where I go on ocarina buying sprees. And then I don't touch the ocarinas ever again, except when I like make an inventory to check out every single ocarina that I own. Click the card right there. <laughs> I also have camera lenses that I haven't touched in like a year. They're ones that this is an upgrade against. So I, I mean, there's a reason I haven't touched them in a long time, but nevertheless, there are expensive purchases that I've made that in the moment felt like completely rational, completely right. And just because I didn't wait on them or didn't have a clear purpose about it, I bought them and then the purchases just collect dust and I'm down several hundred dollars. But the major point is to understand why you want something, whether it's an ocarina or not, before buying it. If the item that you're buying doesn't have a concrete purpose, or you might just stop using it after just a short period of time, maybe consider waiting or skipping it entirely. While a new ocarina like this Spencer Alto C Double, I love it so much. It is so crisp and nice. Um, not sponsored, by the way. I just really like Spencer's Ocarinas. But while a new Ocarina might be great motivation to help you practice more, get back on your groove, whatever, the Ocarinas you already have are still there. And while you might covet a particular Ocarina that you don't have, why do you want it in the first place? Chances are you might not need it. And I am not saying never get new ocarinas. I am not calling out the people who are ocarina collectors and that is their pride and joy and it makes them happy. That's a purpose. Happiness is a purpose. And also we need people to buy ocarinas. If we don't support ocarina makers and vendors, we don't have an ocarina community because we need ocarinas to have an ocarina community. Big brain right there. <laughs> but the major point is be mindful with your ocarina purchases or any purchase. Make sure you can afford it. Know the purpose of the purchase. Check and see if you already have something that fulfills that purpose. Reflect and understand if this is something that you will probably only use for a short period of time and then discard and forget. But then if you still really, really want it, even with all those considerations, at least wait a little bit before you've pulled the trigger to make sure that there is some long-term desire associated with the purchase. You can really apply this framework to any major purchase of something that is big, expensive, helpful, but technically unnecessary, like a new camera lens or new shoes or something like that. Something that there actually is a concrete purpose for using, but you might not need. Subscribe for more Ocarina content and tips. Oh, and leave a like. Bye.